Hello, this is Jared from Commit to Quality, and in today's video, I want to talk about Gherkin. Specifically, I want to talk about the main keywords used in Gherkin. Now, this is going to be a little mini series I do. We're going to cover off a lot of different things. Today's video is going to be about the Gherkin syntax and the main keywords you're going to see in the most common scenario types. However, I'm going to have some follow-on videos, which is going to go into more secondary keywords and a bit more complex detail in Gherkin. At the end of this little mini series, I'm hoping you have enough knowledge to take away and use in your own projects and feel that you can offer the best advice to your teams and the work you're doing. Now, what I will say is this video is not going to be around BDD. I already have a video about BDD. I'll put that in the description, but I would definitely recommend watching that before you carry on with this video, just so you understand kind of where Gherkin fits into the BDD process. I'm also going to be using Specflow or Rec and Roll now because they're basically the same thing, but Rec and Roll is the more up-to-date version. But what I'm going to teach you will apply to any BDD tool you're going to be using. So you can follow along because Gherkin is a universal kind of syntax. Let's jump right into that. So I already have my feature file here. I've named, named it example.feature, but typically what you'll do is you'll name your feature file the same as what your feature name is. And as we're talking about feature files, let's just say about what a feature is. It's basically a collection of scenarios and a feature will have three main things. It'll have a title, a description and a scenario. So if I type feature here, we can see that our kind of keyword here has gone blue because this is because Visual Studio has recognized that feature is a keyword in the Gherkin syntax. And now I'm just going to write my title. So I could say, um, tell you what, let's use an example. So let's use commit quality as a website. Here on commit quality, we have products page, we have logins, we have different things, but I'm going to focus on the login component here. So what I can say is as a user, I want to attempt to log in so I can use my elevated privilege. Well, some bit of typo there, so let's just clean those up. So what I'm saying is now is I understand that this feature is to do with authentication. I have added that extra description that gives us a bit more detail. So now what I can do is I can start writing a bunch of scenarios. So I want to say scenario if I could type correctly, scenario, which is another keyword, and we'll discuss this in one moment. Let's just say um, logged in successfully. So what I've got here is my keyword, and I've got my title of my scenario. And all a scenario is, is an individual test that's basically going to describe a business rule. Your scenario name must be unique in the feature file. So if I was to have two scenarios here, what you're going to find is this has gone red and it's because it says the feature file already contains a scenario. So if I was trying to execute this, then we're going to have problems. But while I've got another one, let's say um, unsuccess. Well, login. Now you can have as many scenarios as you want inside a feature file but you can only have one feature. So let's just deal with those at the moment. Now it's worth mentioning Typically, a scenario will have a title, which has to be there because you need to know what it is. So a scenario will have a title and then have a list of steps. And you can also add a summary like we have with a feature file here. However, it is optional. And to be honest, I hardly ever use that. The only time I could think about is where you need to add more context to your scenario. But if you're crafting your scenarios in your refinement session or your three amigo session, then this should be something that the whole the team understand and the star name should be more than enough. Now we just talked about steps and steps are a way to perform actions and validate that a business rule is being met. And the steps are basically what we code against then. So let's look into the steps and what keywords we have. Now a key one is given. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start adding comments to this. So it makes a little bit more sense. And given is the setup step. This is something that typically happens in the past and it puts your software into a known state. So that's what this given step will do. And if I type given and then space, you can see it's gone blue because that's a keyword in Gherkin. And I'm gonna say I am on the commit quality 
login page. So this is my setup step where it's happened in the past. And I'm saying, okay, when, when I run this scenario, the first thing I want to do is the setup, which is go into the login page. And that's the known state I am on then. The next keyword we have is when. And let's just add another comment here. And we'll say this. So when describes an action that needs to happen. So I could say um, when I log in with secure credentials. And then we have our last keyword, which is the then, which is going to be the assertion. So this is the result slash expected outcome. Our assertion. So then I could say then I should see I am authenticated. These are three keywords that you're going to see in most of your tests. So given I do something, when I action something, then I assert something. Of course, typically you wouldn't see them with comments in between. You just see them looking like this, which is obviously a lot cleaner. And what you should be as a you, what you should be as a, maybe a third party, you should be able to look at the scenario and go, okay, I know this is to log in. And I know you're going to the login page. You enter in secure credentials and you see that you're authenticated. Perfect. That test gets automated in the background, which we're not going to be covering as part of this series. But someone with no actual technology knowledge or no coding experience will be able to look at this this scenario here, understand exactly what's supposed to happen without having to need without having to need to look at the code. Next, then we have this unsuccessful login. So let's write something similar. So I can take that given because that's exactly the same. So we want to be on the login page. Then I can say when I try to log in using incorrect credentials, then I should see a validation message. But I also want to say and I should not be logged in. So I want to see the validation message, but I also want to say I'm logged in. Now I could go, then again, I see I am not logged in. So let's just read this second. We've got, given I'm on the commit quality login page, when I try to log in using incorrect credentials, then I should see a validation message, then I am not logged in. It doesn't read quite right. But if we change this to the and keyword, Kind of makes more sense with given I am logged in, given given I am on the login page, when I try to log in, then I should see a validation message and I see I am not logged in. And this is the other keyword, and, and this can be applied after any of the main keywords you have given when then. And this just makes it more readable. It will act as the keyword that's above it. And this is purely for human benefits and makes things easier. So I could have put the and anywhere above here and all would be fine. It's just a keyword that tries to follow things on. So let's just undo that. You can have multiple ands as well. So you could say, and I'm not logged in and something else. Let's just say an X, Y, Z and whatever else. A, B, C. So you can keep adding as many ands as you want. It's just all about keeping it nice and readable. Now then, I want to teach you about another keyword, which is more for negative behavior. So i uh, tell you what, let's copy this scenario because I don't need to rewrite everything again. I want to say, uh, do not enter password. So I'll say, given I'm on commit quality page, when I enter a username, but I do not enter a password, then I should see a validation message. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll say, and I click login. Then I should see a validation message and I should not be logged in. And what you've noticed here is we've used another keyword called but. And this can be used when you want to say something negative, for example, like not entering something like we've done here where we haven't entered a password. Or maybe you're not seeing something, maybe you're asserting stuff and you want to say, but I do not see this button on the page. Once again, it's just for readability. You can add these as many times as you want. It can go under whatever keyword you want. You just want to make things readable. Now, something we just talked about as well is if we had multiple ands. So you could say, um, let's take this one and we'll make a scenario which is just login 
being very specific. So this isn't a great example because you probably won't need to do this because typically when I log in with secure credentials would be a perfect scenario. But you could have actually said is when I enter username and I enter a password and I click login, then I should see I'm authenticated. Now, there's nothing really wrong with this, but if you're adding a load of ants, it could get tiring to read. So there is a keyword, which is the asterisk, and this can be used if there's a list of keywords that you want to follow just to make things more readable. So instead of and, I could say asterisk and asterisk, and this basically acts as a keyword above as well. So I can say, when I enter a username, I enter a password, I click login, then I should see I'm authenticated. So if you have a long list of a long list of steps, then you can just use the asterisk as well. Maybe you want to check specific things in a list and you could say, OK, I'll add these asterisks and make it look kind of like a bullet point kind of list. Now, what we've spoke about today is typically the very basic core concepts you go into want to know. And I'll just have a quick summary of what we've described, discussed. So we've talked about the feature keyword, and this describes a feature that's being tested. A feature will have a title, a summary, and a scenario or list of scenarios inside it. Then we have the scenario. This describes a specific situation or use case that needs to be tested. We're then going into our step keywords, which is a given, which is the initial context of the scenario, which is basically in the past. It's the setup. You have the when, which is going to describe an action or an event in the scenario. And then you have then, which describes the expected outcome of your actions or events. We've also talked about kind of these helper keywords of and, which is used to add more context with given when or then steps. It can be added to all of them. We talked about but. The but keyword, which is used to add a negative context to given when or then steps. And we also talked about the asterisk, which you can kind of use as a bullet pointed list, which is just going to copy the same keyword that was above. Now, there are a couple of golden rules when you're writing Gherkin. You want to make sure that for like scenario type titles, you don't make them too vague because I could have said enter details. But what exactly does that mean? If I say enter details, you will have to read through each step to understand what's going on. However, if I say logged in successfully, you know that basically this scenario is covering, covering a sanity test where you're logging in and authenticating with the site. Now, these are known as the primary keywords, but we do have other keywords that we'll learn in the next video. There are some arguments that you could consider other other keywords in Gherkin to be primary, but I think they deserve a separate video because this is purely to get you to know and create a basic Gherkin document. Now, we talked about golden rules. We talked about keeping scenarios nice and descriptive, but also a keyword must be at the start of a new line. So what you can see is given, when, then, and, but. They're all at the start of a new line. You can't have multiple keywords following each other. So you can't go then, then, or then, and, because it's only going to pick up the first keyword we have here. And they all need to start on a new line. So if you say given I'm on the commit to quality login page, when I log in, that's not treated at its own keyword and step. This would all just be one single step. So make sure they stay on separate lines. You can, of course, follow keywords with the same. So I can say given blah and given blah, blah. Completely fine to do. However, like we talked about, you're going to want to use the keywords of and and but to give a bit more context and make things a lot more readable. Because saying given, given, given is a lot harder to read than saying given and and. So that's just how our brains are programmed. Now, in the next videos, we're going to be learning about the background keyword, examples and scenario outlines, data tables, tags, and even more. I hope you found this useful. If you do have any comments or questions, please drop them down in the comment section below. I've also enabled super thanks on my videos. So if you do want to help support the running of my channel or website, you can do that via super thanks. But as always, thanks for watching. Have a good day.